what's going on guys today we are going to start uh the regular series of threat hunt but we are going to divide this uh new hunt in some parts like maybe two or three parts and we are going to discuss about hunting on process execution or process creation okay so process creation is a very big thing where we capture the logs using like windows system events sysmon and lot of things okay but when you are doing threat hunt on process execution or process creation you need to follow some like a uh, basic hypothesis process or some structural method okay so we are going to do that so in today's episode uh, i have again uh, created a github repository where i have given everything so i'll go through the github repository quickly and what is the procedure that we are going to follow and this is a, a beginning series okay and in our next parts with the process execution and process hunt so we are going to do a real life demo what on what exactly i am showing today okay so now jumping directly to the github so what is the thing that you should start from your basic right so hypothesis is something like um you are just creating your hunt out of the blue right so you do not know if there is something hidden um there is something malicious going on but you need to first do your baselining to understand how the process execution data is present in your architecture your organization and then you should try to follow the path and then you go drill down that particular process right so if you start from very basic thing okay so the first thing so we have given two type of queries so the first query that i have given is uh, the basic if you do not have the um, sysmon logs so windows segment security event logs and the second one is obviously the sysmon log okay so the two queries that i have given so the first thing is that 4688 event code that we are targeting to understand what are the process that is getting created okay and we are doing the stats with the new process name and process command line these two things are very important for you to understand what is going on okay so once you have done that you will see that okay what are the all processes that i am getting maybe you can capture like one month logs and you will get to know like what are the things those are very common to my network okay and this is a uh, splunk based queries because <clears throat> our hypothesis will run on splunk okay so now this is the similar query that i have given for the sysmon log also where the event id is one that means the process creation okay so now powershell as we have seen in our previous episode on um ransomware hunting powershell is still used and it is very famous for the threat actors okay so we are we thought so i thought to target the powershell um so now when you need to do the powershell logging and uh, want to capture those things so it is very uh like a common that new process name should be powershell.exe now just notice i have just given an asterisk because it could be something else also uh which is basically trailing it will be ending with powershell.exe and again we am starting it with the process name and process command line so that i would know that how many powershell process is getting created on my network on daily basis and what are their command lines that is the very important thing as i have mentioned in my previous episode as well to capture the command line that's how you will know that what is going on okay so the next step once you know what are the things that is going on in powershell let's assume that you have identified some of your uh, whitelisting process that is going on so you want to cut that short off okay so now you can simply mention not process line in the list of your things that you want to be avoided okay and then you should again stats by using the new process and process command line that's the thing that you would know that okay these two this is our legitimate things that is going on on my network and i should avoid them this is the simple whitelisting process by which you will now drilling down your data and you are seeing what is going on into your network okay so it is the same query that we are using for the next drill down so now here it is the interesting thing guys so let's assume that we have a black pearl uh, directory so this is basically the 
uh, the root of it and this is an example okay so let's say you have a black pearl directory and you are having a tool and you are having a script okay so basically you want to whitelist those powershell script which you know by default the admin can run or or even you are aware of okay so you are basically trying to whitelist those things so that as simple as that okay so the second thing is that now uh, if you want to do the similar query in sysmon obviously it will be the same just the naming convention so the process event id will change which is the one and here it is 4688 okay so now let's assume that if you uh, we are talking about powershell right and you can tell me that hey i do not want to restrict my search only on powershell i want to search for other things like uh, commands uh, then maybe the cs scripts then the wmi and stuff like that so it is very easy so now the way the splunk thing works so if you are not including any operator in between so that is anyway take in consideration as and or if you specify and that is super fine and even you can ignore it as well and if you want to mention the or operator then you have to specify it with the or or operator right so that's the way splunk query works and now here if you know the new process name you have a list of process which you know the trailing section would be something like command.exe powershell.exe cscript.exe you just simply put that in in and then you get it from there okay so these are the list of things and then you write the same thing you just ignore whatever you know and then start it right so simple query similar that works on sysmon as well right so now the interesting part is guys now we are doing a couple of whitelisting over here right so when we say we are doing the whitelisting that means you are in a position that there could be some scenarios where you are actually might be ignoring some true positives right because you are totally ignoring a portion of your script where you know it could be legitimate but what if an attacker knows those things and they specifically drops the binary drops the payload in those specific folders right so you are doomed in that case so the basic hypothesis goes in like that way there are two approach you can take the first approach you create a statistics on your whitelisted folder and you keep on monitoring them and a second one is already you know the way that we are doing apart from everything whatever whitelisted you are monitoring that okay so the thing is that this is the warning about the whitelisting data so now here what you are doing let's say you know the process monitoring and this is the specific things that you are doing okay so this is the option one use the overly broad filter okay so you know which location are whitelisted and you monitor those things okay and the second thing is that if you want to monitor for those options like let's say um here it's like event id one that anyway so we are talking about process creation and you can make filter less broadened and simply by giving the exact path of those binaries okay so let's say you know a particular path in like program files monitoring agent dot bin okay so either two option either you pull the overall path directory of your program underscore file monitoring or you put the trailing things as well like agent dot bin so that you would know that okay so this is my whitelisting folder and i am i am not putting my filter in a very broader approach i am just keeping those folder or those directories into my whitelisting which i know they are whitelisted in my organization okay so these are the two options so that's pretty much it that we wanted to cover it's a quick one and i know i know by looking at this query so what i guys what i want you guys to now do just go to this github repository take those commands and just run those in your environment if you are not using splunk anyway fine but any of your uh like sim tools can have similar queries you can simply pipe it and you can get to know what the hell is going on right so i want you guys now to perform this query comment down me and if you see something suspicious is going on and at least you can understand what is common what is baseline on your network right so we will see in our next episode how these demo things is basically done so that whatever we have shown whatever i have shown in this particular episode we will track from process creation in splunk and we will try to see what is going on if you if we find something anomalous using the same set of queries okay so now that's pretty much it if you guys are thinking that hey process creation is uh, like uh, 
a very old thing right but but remember everything you if you are actually hunting for something like true negative and you know that your tools never gonna capture it but you know something is bad on your network these kind of hypothesis will help you okay so there are sweat and blood involved doing this hunt but trust me it will work okay so yeah that's pretty much it now go to the github repository pin down those commands and try and let me know what you think i'll catch you guys next time stay healthy stay safe